On this episode of China Uncensored, we look back at the year that made China great again. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Congratulations! We made it through 2017 without a single nuclear war. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Although there's still a couple of days left. Hope I didn't just jinx it for everyone. Anyway, so many things happened in 2017 that we constantly forgot what happened last week, let alone last January. But don't worry, I'm here to help. Together, we shall relive the 10 biggest China stories of the year in all their glory. Starting with... Number 10. The China-India Border Conflict Back in June, India and China came close to war over a border dispute. Again. The Chinese regime loves a good old-fashioned border conflict. After all, so much of the world has been a part of China since ancient times that border disputes just come with the territory. The conflict was over this piece of land in Bhutan, the Doklam Plateau. China was building a road through it, a road that India is afraid could be used to move Chinese troops into India someday. So India was only too happy to send troops in, you know, to help their friends in Bhutan. That led to a military standoff with China that lasted 74 days. Ultimately, the status quo prevailed. But there was plenty of time for Indian media to make some pretty cool animations. Number 9. Guo Wenguai The mysterious Chinese billionaire stormed onto the scene earlier this year with an $82 million Manhattan condo, his own YouTube channel, and an endless stream of thirsty workout videos on Twitter. Guo began revealing all the secrets of China's elite, using confusing conspiracy-type diagrams on Twitter. Wow, that is convincing, and so helpful. The Chinese regime even tried to extradite Guo, and got Interpol to post a red notice for him. Now far be it from me to criticize someone for using the internet to criticize CCP members, but surprise, it's more complicated than that. Guo has been exposing officials linked to Xi Jinping. But there are indications that Guo is actually closely linked to China's spy network, and that he's mainly interested in destabilizing cronies of Xi, like Wang Xishan. Guo may be connected to a political faction within the CCP that's tied to former Chinese leader and mass murderer Jiang Zemin. As Guo said once, so it's unclear whether Guo Wenghui is a dissident trying to expose real problems inside China, or whether he's mainly interested in taking down political rivals. But one thing's for sure. We're going to be seeing a lot more of Guo in 2018, and probably still in vertical video. Number 8. Hong Kong Goes Wrong 2017 marked the 20th anniversary of the British handover of Hong Kong to the Chinese Communist Party. Part of that agreement was that Hong Kong gets to keep the freedoms it enjoyed under British rule, freedoms denied in mainland China, for at least 50 years. Well, 20 years is almost 50 years, right? Because those freedoms are on the way out. A British citizen was denied entry. Democratically elected lawmakers critical of the Chinese Communist Party were purged. And student activists were jailed. And let's not forget that in mainland China, you can now be sent to prison for three years for disrespecting the national anthem. That law is coming soon to a Hong Kong near you. Wow, that was depressing. Moving on to... Number 7. A Bad Year for Dissidents to be fair, every year is a bad year for dissidents in China. But this year, there were a lot of cases that got media attention. Taiwanese rights activist Li Mingzhe was abducted by Chinese police while visiting mainland China earlier in the year and was just sentenced to five years in jail. Also hit for subversion, Chinese rights lawyer Jiang Tianyong. Another Chinese lawyer, Gao Zhisheng, disappeared, only to finally reappear again in police custody. And international headlines were made when Chinese dissident and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Liu Xiaobo was released from prison, and then almost immediately died. It was from cancer, totally unrelated to all the years of abuse in prison. 
You see, rights groups say a pattern has emerged in recent years where China releases activists from prison in poor health or only weeks before they pass away. When really we should be thanking the CCP for allowing dissidents to be tortured in prison instead of just getting shot like in the old days. See, that's more cheerful. Number six, forced evictions. The poor migrant workers who flocked to Beijing over the last decade helped fuel China's economic growth, and the Communist Party is looking out for them. After a fire broke out in a shoddy building in a migrant neighborhood on the outskirts of Beijing, Chinese police were quickly on the scene, throwing everyone out into the sub-zero weather with nothing but the clothes on their backs, you know, in the name of fire safety. It absolutely had nothing to do with Beijing's population control plan that was announced just a few months before, or that the land is worth big bucks to real estate developers. The forced evictions caused a huge outcry within China, despite the Chinese regime's desperate attempts to censor all news about it. And for some reason, Chinese authorities also felt it was necessary to shut down donations and charity people were trying to give to the evicted migrants. And this was just the tip of the iceberg. Which brings us to... Number five, kindergarten abuse. RYB Kindergarten has been accused of stabbing kids as young as three with needles, feeding them mysterious pills, even sexual abuse. Now, some of those accusations may be false, at least according to Chinese police and state-run media. But the Chinese regime also decided this was another scandal worthy of massive censorship. This, combined with the migrant evictions happening at the same time, made this the most censored couple of weeks in the whole year. The kindergarten abuse scandal was different in that it affected China's upper middle class, the ones who are supposed to be safe from all the corruption under the Chinese regime because they keep their heads down, don't talk about politics, and stick to making money. Cleaning up this mess won't be as easy as bulldozing a bunch of migrant homes. Okay. How about something happy-ish? Number four, U.S.-China bromance. It's hard to believe, but Donald Trump has only been president for less than a year. And in that time, he and Chinese leader Xi Jinping have created a great relationship. It all began with a meeting at Trump's Pleasure Palace in Xanadu back in April. And yes, the cake was amazing. I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. Since then, the relationship has only blossomed. Our relationship with you and China is a very important one to me. Especially when Trump visited China in November. He got the star treatment. They watched home movies together, perused ancient artifacts, and politely sat through a Peking opera. President Trump even became the first foreign leader to dine in the Forbidden City. But are they really the best of friends? Or is there maybe something more to the relationship? That brings us to... Number three, nuking it out with North Korea. The Chinese regime is none too happy with its nuclear neighbor to the Northeast. For years, China acted as the go-between for the Kim Dynasty and the rest of the world. It worked great until North Korea decided it didn't want to play by Beijing's rules. Not only did North Korea do its largest ever nuclear test in September, along with 16 ballistic missile tests this year alone, Kim Jong-un also sent assassins to kill his half-brother, Kim Jong-nam. He was the guy the Chinese regime ultimately wanted in charge of North Korea. And each communist regime used their state-run media to slam the other. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party isn't the only one upset at Kim Jong-un. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Which is exactly what the Chinese regime is afraid of. U.S. military action on the Korean Peninsula. Not only would that mean U.S. troops get a little too close for comfort, that would also mean a collapse of the Kim dynasty and a flood of North Korean refugees into China. So President Trump has been pressuring China in the best way he knows how, with Twitter. And maybe if China helps by putting more sanctions on North Korea, Trump will look the other way with that whole labeling China a currency manipulator thing. And it seems Trump's plan to use his bromance with Xi Jinping has worked to an extent. 
The Chinese regime, North Korea's largest trading ally, has placed tougher sanctions on North Korea. But the Chinese regime doesn't want to push too hard, or else it could lead to the collapse of North Korea and the very same refugee problem. But at least we've averted nuclear war so far. Number two, the land down under. The Chinese regime has been buying influence in political and social circles around the world. And this year, Australia became the Foster's drinking canary in the coal mine. This is from June. A joint investigation by a team of journalists from Four Corners and Fairfax Media has exposed a concerted campaign by the Chinese government and its proxies to infiltrate the Australian political process to promote its own interests. The Chinese regime sent people to infiltrate universities, local community groups, media and political leaders. Yeah, how dare a country send criminals to Australia? In response, Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull announced an overhaul to espionage and intelligence laws. And finally, number one, the era of Xi Jinping thought. The United States Constitution is all about basic human rights and checks and balances on government power. The Chinese Communist Party's constitution is pretty much the same. Only instead of basic human rights, it guarantees the right of the Communist Party to rule over all. And instead of checks and balances, it's more about which leader has checked their opponent and knocked them off balance. At this year's 19th Party Congress, Xi Jinping got himself written into the Communist Party's constitution. It's this bit. The Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. Notice Xi's political opponent, Jiang Zemin, doesn't have his name in there. <laughs> yes, it's been a big year for Xi, rising to even greater heights of power while dominating his political opponents. And in the real world, that translates to state-run media making sure Xi Jinping blocks out Jiang Zemin. At this point, Challenging Xi is tantamount to challenging the Communist Party itself. But while that means Xi's got the power, it also means he'll be the fall guy if anything goes wrong. And there's a lot of things that could go wrong. An unbalanced economy, bad debt, apocalyptic pollution, and a public that's starting to wise up to the fact that there might not be much of a new China with the Communist Party. But all that can wait for 2018. Thanks for spending an incredible year with us here at China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you in 2018. Should old acquaintance be forgotten, never brought to mind? Of course not. And the best way to remember our old acquaintance is by heading over to ChinaUncensored.tv. There's no better way to spend your holiday than catching up on half-hour episodes of China Uncensored you won't see on YouTube. Make your New Year's resolution to watch more China Uncensored.